Hey, what's up guys? Chris Cohen here and welcome to this week's tutorial. Um, before we get started guys, this video is brought to you by myself and the Creatrix store. Have a link in the description. It has really cool stuff which I think you guys are gonna love, especially something that is used to almost all of my projects which is the Cinema Lads Signature Edition. You guys have been awesome and you always have such positive comments when it comes to my color grading. So if you're interested, I'll have the links down below. With that said, let's take a look at this week's effect. really exciting it's a very straightforward effect and i think it has a lot of uses i used it in the kingdom hearts short concept film where i have the keyblade and it's like fighting back on me and also in the tokyo ghoul effect where uh it has like a psych scene after like the eyes turn all weird and stuff so yeah very exciting but i do need to let you guys know that you need to keep some things in mind during shooting in order to basically pull the effect off so in order to do this, you need to have your talent do something very interesting. They need to hold their hands or neck or whatever it is that you want to have that effect on still, but at the same time, try to move it. And this kind of fighting motion will create a trembling effect. And with that, we can take it in post and in after effects and get that effect. So basically, you try to move it, but you try to fight it at the same time. So it creates this very slight movement and that with the post of a processing effect is gonna give you that look. So keep that in mind guys, and with that said, fire up After Effects and let's get started. Okay guys, so here we are within After Effects and I have my clip over here. It's pre-color graded and some effects have been applied. That's in case uh, the computer cannot handle the amount of effects and layers because it's quite a heavy project. So I've pre-rendered the clip because we only care about the force tremble effect that we're going to take a look at. So if I scroll here, put it on quarter res, you see we have the action and about here, if I let it play for a bit, you can see what I'm saying here. So this is straight out of the camera with that tremble thing we talked about and this is how it looks. So now we're going to take this and maxify, uh, maximize it with an effect. I used a plugin called RSM Pro, which is basically Force Motion Blur. After Effects does have uh, an effect called Force Motion Blur, which is used to basically intensify um, the blurriness uh, when it comes to your clip in case you had to use a higher shutter speed on location. But I've tried to make the same thing work with this effect, but unfortunately I couldn't. So we do have to use a plugin and it's uh, it's not available for free. So please do keep that in mind. But anyways, I'm going to show you guys because I think it's really cool. So I have a duplication here. So I'm just going to open up the first one so you can see what it does. So if I zoom here, off and on. Now, of course, you have to play with the value. So I crammed up the blur amount to three and I have it actually keyframed. So if I press my layer and press U on the keyboard, we can open up all the keyframes. So in order to create a new adjustment layer, you could do two layers, new adjustment layer. And this is what we have here. Then I went to effects, revision uh, plugins and RSM Pro. Now, when you first apply, if I hit reset over here, this is what it gives me, so off and on. If I zoom in here, you can see it's a very slight move. So when you increase the amount to like three, that's when it, the cool things start happening. So basically it's like a hack because the plugin is used to apply motion blur in general. Um, but w here's the trick guys. When it comes to an adjustment layer, you can create a mask within After Effects and also you can track that mask within After Effects. So what I did here, I went over here, select my ellipse tool and I created a circle, which is our mask over here. And if you guys can see, I can move that mask anywhere that I want, right? So if I press M to only bring up the mask path, you can see that I keyframe the mask path and you can keyframe uh, mask by basically pr person, pressing the keyframe, going up a few clip, uh, a few frames, and then reposition it, and will create a new frame automatically. So basically, very simply, I followed the action of the hand for the entire life of the clip, 
I basically animated the mask using keyframes to follow the hand and relatively keep the hand in the circle, within the circle. And that's how we only apply the motion blur effect to this specific part. So we don't apply it to the hair or to any other action that exists within our composition, within our frame, and we only apply it to that specific um, section of the clip. In this way, you can really crank up the effect of motion blur. In this way, you create that trembling effect because if you remember, we only uh, allowed the hand or whatever you have to uh, make this effect on to kind of stay still, but at the same time tremble and shake. And that's how you do that. So now that we have a new adjustment layer and we have our mask path ready to go, we're ready to start playing around with our values to see how the effect will turn out. So in this case, number one, it came to a value of three and this one is animated as well. So now if I close this and I press U to bring all the keyframes, uh, we have the mask and then we have the first effect and then the duplication of it. So basically when the hand starts, right when it starts, that's when I start bringing in the effect by again using keyframes to adjust the value of the blur itself. So from zero, as you guys can see here, in this keyframe, we go up and this now the effect starts taking f uh, quite a bit of force. And as we move through, and we go and we go and we reach very close to the camera because the action of the hand itself uh, extensifies. I need to actually bring the blur effect a bit down to cope with the amount of blur because it's very easy to, ta to take something um, over the top and make it look actually more fake. So keep in mind that you always need to adjust your values depending on what's happening in frame. So as we move along, it keeps going, it keeps going, it keeps going, and when it's time to end, we do the opposite. From a great value, we reduce it back to zero, and it stops. Now, I decided that um, the, the first one was not enough in terms of blur, so what I did, let me reopen this, is I duplicated the effect to really maximize its punchline, let's say. So if I play it now, you can see it takes a big toll on the computer, but you can see that it starts to do this insane kind of like really weird fantasy psych kind of movement. We play this and you see in, in real time it looks really jarring and really cool. So that's how you do the effect and you can play around depending on your clip. You don't really have to just copy paste values. I really want you guys to know why you do something. So. This is the primary effect, but there's actually a little trick that I want to show you guys to take it uh, even further. And I really like doing small things here and there to like magnify something. So now that we have our effect in place, we can see that the framing sta stands still. Even though if you keep in mind the entire post-processing and effects, for example, sound design that is going to take place after uh, the cut is locked, um, we can really start th thinking about what we can do to maxify, maximize the impact to the viewer. So now what I want to do is because I have a, st a still frame, not a still frame, like I have a static image in terms of the framing, like the camera is basically on a tripod. What I want to do is the moment that the effect starts acting up, which is almost right there, I want to introduce a camera shake. Now it doesn't have to be over the top again, like subtlety will take you a long way when it comes to um, visual effects and making things look cool without being overwhelming to the eye. So by pressing P on the keyboard, oh thank you for autosave After Effects, I'm gonna bring up the position values of our layer. If you hit, uh, if you hit Alt and then the keyframe, you're gonna open up the expressions tab and here we're gonna introduce a wiggle effect to make our layer shake. So you can type wiggle parentheses and then it really depends on how much shakiness you wanna have in like, so let's try a value of one comma 20 comma one and we close it down. If I now press preview, I'm actually gonna close off 
we can start seeing what happens now this is actually quite small you can see it playing here like if I select my clip you can see the clip moving around but it's actually not enough so I'm gonna boost up the values let's see say two no two so now you can see what happens you see how it trembles and you can actually by increasing for example like this value to like ah, let's go extreme just for the example's sake let's say 50 now press play do you see what happens and you can really play around depending on like how close um what kind of lens you used how close the action is now of course when you do this you need to press s and change the scale so let's say 100 to 0.5 to uh, not have the clip uh, clip off on the edges because the uh, the program is making it shake around a lot. So you see now how much more dynamic our shot uh, is. I actually need to increase the scale a bit uh, compared to what it was before. So that, let's go like 104. Um, co when you combine the effect as well, really makes a big difference to the final result and then you have of course sound design and the uh, all the clips that basically makes the audience like attention and like it grabs it and makes it like really cool and cinematic so all all of those things just come together and when you apply little tricks and uh, and tips like this really um when everything comes together at the end it makes for an epic scene Okay guys, so that's a wrap. What did you guys think? Did you enjoy the effect? Are you gonna use it? Let me know in the description below. As always, check the other awesome tutorials on the channel, check the Creative Store for awesome assets, and do subscribe and share this video because we're almost at 80k and I couldn't be more excited. So, I'll catch you guys next week and until then, stay creative.